Balran, a remote wilderness of towering mountains and shimmering waters. A land teeming with wildlife and marked by unparalleled beauty. It's breathtaking. It's so pretty. It is just gorgeous. An untarnished landscape pierced by raging rivers and flanked by ancient old growth rainforests. Biggest tree I've ever seen in my life. kind of noticed that a lot of stuff around here in the mountains is fairly unpredictable in terms of weather. It's been raining non-stop. Everything is completely soaked. We've reached a saturation point with our gear. These long, narrow mountain chain lakes really can funnel wind down it. We'll have to potentially tack in and out if the waves do pick up. Yeah! Hey! Located in the Canadian province of British Columbia, the Balran Lake Canoe Circuit links over 118 kilometers of pristine wilderness waterways. Ten lakes and a handful of rushing rivers carve a paddler's paradise through the towering peaks of the Caribou Mountain Range. Long regarded as a world-renowned wilderness paddling destination, the Bow Run attracts backcountry seekers from across the globe. This trip had long sat atop our bucket list of places to explore. Now, with five days to spare, we finally had a chance to make this dream trip a reality and set out to discover the secrets of this famed chain for ourselves. We are here in beautiful British Columbia. It's a scenery that has drawn us to this trip and it is a world-renowned canoe circuit. So we're gonna kick things off with a few big two kilometer portages back to back to back. So not much filming until we get out to our destination for tonight. Long walk to get into the park, but we are looking forward to it. Yes, might look wide and clear but we've been climbing the entire time and it's so humid today so you know just working up a good sweat on a fairly straightforward carry it's hard oh. yes sir walk in the park well that's what i'm doing i'm walking in the park I uh, just, you know, first day, everything's heavy. All right, we're on Kibi Creek. We just did a 2.4K portage from the parking lot to start our trip. So really, when the pack is the heaviest, we start backpacking, essentially. It's supposed to be a canoe route. I don't know about that. It feels more like a backpacking route. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because Lee and I are on this western mid cross country road trip to Canada and we've done a few backpacking trips and some big day hikes mountain ascents so all we've been doing is backpacking I haven't been paddling since we were in Manitoba last week and this is quite different oh it feels good being on the water it really does I'm like how do I paddle pretty excited just because I've never canoed in the big mountains before. The scenery is going to be so worth it and we have some good meals planned for our trip. It's a good midway point of our honeymoon here to do some backcountry which is very much us. It's going to be really interesting paddling. We've got a bit of river, a lot of big lakes, small lakes to do and just a few little rapids here and there but really it's a flat water trip with some longer portages at the start. Last portage of the day going into Isaac Lake. Apparently this one's a little muddy in parts. So we'll see. And there's the beautiful wife trailside stuff. Trail mule. So today, done about 6.4k of walking, which is what it is. Not too bad. These are pretty wide, clear, flat trails. Most people are using carts. We've passed a few parties already, and they've all been using carts. But you know, we never really use carts. We've been moving pretty well with these, passing everyone anyways. So I don't know what's actually faster because uh, we've just got the two bags and uh, yeah, seem to be moving pretty well, per usual.
gorgeous spot here. We made it to Isaac Lake and Long Lake looking down at the chain of mountains here. It is absolutely gorgeous. As we rounded the bend, we were just awestruck with these snowy, craggly peaks. All in all, today we did about 22K. Did the first three portages, so 6.4 kilometers of walking already, starting at 12.30, 1 o'clock. Pretty decent day. It's about 6 o'clock now, so we're gonna get dinner started and uh, unwind for the night. Tonight's dinner, classic steak, roasted potatoes, salad, real hearty first night meal, fresh food. A little extra weight in that portage pack with the potatoes and steak and whatnot. Other concern we gotta worry about is that we are in bear country. And there was a sign posted when we came here too that caution there's a bit of a nuisance bear in the area. So it's probably why the site was free. When you get in some of these heavily used areas, Bears become more habituated to people because not every camper practices leaving a nice clean campsite. So the park staff have provided these food lockers to keep food away, but even at this site, we still found half burnt garbage in the fire pit, evidence that you know people aren't keeping the most bear safe campsite. So when we normally paddle through areas that most people don't paddle through, you don't really encounter any problematic bears because they don't associate humans with food. But even though this campsite was fairly clean, there's still some attractions for bears around here. So clean it up a little bit, make sure that we leave a clean campsite, no odors out tonight whatsoever. Everything's in the food barrel, which is then going inside the bear-proof canister over there too. So yeah, no bears. Tomorrow, I don't think we have any portages. Thankfully, on the day, we're just going to be paddling down the lake, maybe towards the Caribou River. So we'll see how far we get, but. Yeah, I think now we can uh, relax a bit on this trip because we already did quite a bit of the distance today. We have about five days to do this route too, so I think we'll uh, be more of a relaxing trip. The scenery is just outstanding. I mean, peaks galore around here. There's, there's a view around every single bend. Good morning from beautiful Isaac Lake. Today's plan calls for zero portages. We're gonna be paddling down Isaac Lake for maybe about 30 kilometers or so. We could go a little further, but I mean, we have the time to kind of relax and enjoy ourselves. 30 kilometers of straight lake travel if the winds are down should be pretty easy. It does look like we might have a bit of a headwind. It's still early in the morning. There's just a slight breeze out there. So if this keeps up, all that'll do is just keep the bugs off us. These long, narrow mountain chain lakes really can funnel wind down it. We do have the spray deck. We'll have to potentially tack in and out if the waves do pick up, but it's not really calling for anything. We checked the satellite forecast before we went and looked at the forecast in the park office yesterday too. So should hopefully be pretty good, but We've kind of noticed that a lot of stuff around here in the mountains is fairly unpredictable in terms of weather. Uh, one moment, moment it can be sunny, next moment it can be rainy. Last night especially there was a lot of pop-up thunderstorms with all that heat building up. So 
A little cooler today. Hopefully we don't encounter any storms. It looks like later in the week there's going to be some rain, but today should be a gorgeous day. Going to hit the water and enjoy just an easy, fun day of flat water paddling. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Gorgeous. Sailing on this beautiful, beautiful blue green ocean. <laughs> I know, it feels like the ocean. Down as a lake we go, my dear. Oh, what a great day. So in the park here, there are firewood collection areas where park rangers have actually cut up old dead wood. There was some mountain pine beetle outbreaks here in the late 90s, early 2000s. So there's a lot of dry standing timber in certain areas of the park. So staff have kind of designated these areas where they've gone in and cut up some of the dead wood for folks to use. It's a good idea too to kind of limit the impact of firewood gathering around a campsite, having these sort of central depots along the route for you to pick up already nicely cut up wood. Pretty much all you have to do is split it yourself. Just paddling down looking for a big W on the shoreline and you're, you know there's gonna be firewood there. It's almost like we're on a big river, eh? Yeah, it feels like it. Minus the current. Yeah, no current, but I just got that long, narrow river type vibe. So last night we had some storms move through, just a bit of rain here and there, but there was the odd crack of thunder and some lightning. One sounded really close. We've gone about 15K down the lake and we've actually spotted a small plume of smoke coming off a mountain over here. Wow. Crazy, eh? That's not good. No. We've coordinated to call it into BC Fire in the park office to report it via our satellite communicator here. It's pretty small right now, not really of a concern for our safety at this point in time either. If you see a forest fire out here, please report it. Find a way to get it reported to parks and fire authorities as soon as possible because you don't want these things to spread. It's been hot and dry out here, so some of the mountain is a bit of a tinderbox up there, especially with some of the old dead decaying material from that mountain pine beetle infestation. So it looks pretty small right now. I don't think it's going to be a problem for the rest of our trip. Should we feature? Let's go around. Oh, land ho. All right, so we made it to camp. We're on the south end of Isaac Lake. We had this gorgeous peninsula beach and camp is set back up in an old growth hemlock forest. There's even some really ancient cedar trees in there. So the biggest tree I've ever seen in my life back in here. It's a really special magical place. And Leah's favorite tree is hemlocks. So these Western species really get big. So it's a really, really cool spot for us to hang out for the night. Place. Should we go check out the big cedar? This 
massive cedar tree. It's the biggest tree I've ever seen. In Ontario, we don't have trees anywhere near this big. This thing is incredible. Oh, gross. And I think it's probably not the biggest one around here either. Looking through the forest, I can see some huge trees, big hemlocks, big spruces. I'm sure if I walk further back in the forest, there's more of these huge cedars. It's another massive hemlock. This forest is full of them, carpeted with this lush layer of moss. The Bowron Lakes are situated within the interior wet belt, a vast forest located 500 to 700 kilometers inland from the Pacific coast. Within this wet belt lies a disjunct temperate rainforest, one of only seven in the world, and the only inland temperate rainforest on the planet. The forests surrounding the Bowron Circuit form part of the few remaining old, intact, inland temperate rainforests remaining in North America. Centuries-old large cedars, hemlocks, firs, and pines tower above a forest floor carpeted in a diverse mix of lichen and moss. Currently, only 15% of the inland rainforest's old growth remains, and only 5% is inland old-growth cedar hemlock forest, making these majestic forests a rarity on the landscape. Looks like there might be a little bit of rain on the horizon. Looks like there's some mist in the upper mountains. So we got the tarp set up. We've had a bit of intermittent showers here and there. We got here in good time too. We did about 25 kilometers to the day. So not as much as we wanted to do, but this was a gorgeous spot. Right time of day, we were feeling like this was going to be the perfect spot for us to stay. So, looking forward to tomorrow as we go further down the river and out into some of the other mountain flank lakes too. But for now, we're going to hang out here for the rest of the afternoon and evening. Just relax and enjoy the sights and sounds of the Bow Run. Tonight's dinner, we are doing his and hers deep dish pizza. I have done some fresh dough that I've prepared up into dough balls, and we're gonna be dishing them out into these pie plates. I've got a good fire that I got started about 45 minutes ago when we got to camp. Coals are really hot now, so it's gonna be perfect for using the reflector oven. A little tricky because we're dealing with these metal sort of grills, so I can't set things up the way I'd normally like to with a nice rock wall reflecting off a reflector oven. However, we're gonna use a method I've used before where we tent the pizza on top of the reflector oven so that we kind of have all that heat trapped inside of there. Ta-da, look at that. Pretty good to me, eh? Oh, wow, that looks good. We first started with a layer of the pizza sauce. You the boss, spread that sauce. And then I did a layer of mozzarella cheese. Then some sauteed onions and peppers that we pre-sauteed before so they'd be a bit softer. Then some olives, some shredded sun-dried tomatoes, and then some hot cacciatore. Another quick drizzle of pizza sauce and then topped it with some gouda. We're going to bake this with our reflector oven and we are going to eat our faces off because yesterday we portaged 6 kilometers, canoed 14, today we did 24, and we're still recovering from our big hikes we had a couple days before. Maybe a sizzling. Messy just like deep dish pizza should be. Hey, we got a waterfall in front of us. Snowcapped peaks there. Snowcapped peaks there. Rolling sort of mountains down there. Beach in front of us. Not bad.
Good morning. Rainy day. It rained on and off last night and it's coming down pretty hard right now. Thankfully we're fairly sheltered under this canopy of hemlocks here. We're going to hit the water of course. We're going to be exposed to uh, all the intermittent showers. We do have the deck that should afford us a bit of extra dryness. But we are hitting the river section of our trip which means We'll hit maybe two runnable rapids, portage around some falls and chutes, and then further on down the river, we're gonna have some swifts and stuff to hit up. Pretty waterfall over there. Okay, so first and really only section of white water on our trip. We've got a little class one shoot here, followed by maybe some more class one, class two, nothing really serious. Water levels seem a bit lower down on this river stretch, but yeah, a few little waves to splish splash around in. So this is gonna save us at least 800 meters, maybe 900 meters of portaging. Bottom section we definitely can't run. It's uh, a set of shoots, so a eh, little fun. Should be good. Nice crystal clear waters, catch a few waves and be on our way. That yeah, tongue's kind of right there in the center, eh? Right here. Yeah. Down a bit. Nice. Watch for anything hidden there. It looks pretty much just like a straight tongue though. Yeah. We'll hit the waves. And then we'll stick toward the left. Yep. After. Rock on the right there. Smash some waves! Yeah! Hey, nice job! Yeah! Not bad! Nice! Realize your deck wasn't done up. We got a lot of water in there. <laughs> Not bad. No, I'm not there. I know you did. I put us right into the wave train. Way under. Something white. Looks like a cooler. Don't bring coolers, folks. Oh, okay. Hold the stand. Where? Oh. Shit. They probably dumped in the uh, the wave train. Oof. Take the portage. Gorgeous waterfall here. I wish it wasn't such a rainy day. Probably can't see it as much. Incredible though. Tumbles down about 11 meters. Really powerful. Today I'm actually wearing proper rain gear. For a while I've had these really old pair of rain pants that I think uh, allow more air and rain in than they keep out. But now I've got a pair of Cabela's Rainy River Guide Pants that should hopefully do the trick today. First real time, putting them through their paces and what better place than the uh, wet forests of northern BC. So checking out this rain gear from Cabela's today. Hopefully they do the trick. I'm pretty confident they feel nice. It's Gore-Tex too. And yeah, gonna need it with all this rain today. because of this rain. Man, we are flanked by these snow-capped, craggly mountain peaks up here. It is absolutely amazing. The rain has just been pelting on us all day pretty much since we left camp. So we are soaked to the bowl. We gotta keep moving to stay warm. I can't really get my main camera out to film this, but you gotta trust me, it's absolutely gorgeous scenery in here.
gorgeous. I wish it was not so rainy so everyone could appreciate how beautiful this is because we'd get a lot more video, but this is, it's breathtaking. It's so pretty. It is just gorgeous. So we didn't film much because it's been raining non-stop all day. Nothing else to say. Literally just got to camp at like six o'clock. It's still pouring. It's been raining non-stop. Everything is completely soaked. We've reached a saturation point with our gear. Unfortunately, still a lot of stuff is just completely soaked. Do have warm, dry clothes, so we'll be getting dinner ready. Set the tent up. Sandy site, perfect for a sunny day like 14 and has been raining for like almost 24 hours straight now so kind of crappy but i guess that's what we get for being in like a kind of a rainforest Let's try to make some nice hot beverages and stuff to stay warm because i don't think it's gonna let up anytime soon it's nasty out yeah it sucks there's no way around it it just sucks It is pouring rain. I don't want to go out there to get water. So what I've done instead is just put some cups near the tip of the tarp where the rain's coming off. And then they've filled up in five minutes. Less than that. Looks like I have handlebars now. Look at it. You've got handlebars. I'm calling you Rick. <laughs> it's my... Uh, my wood clothes. A couple days of not shaving. It's hard to maintain the stash in this. So it's raining even harder. There's like flooding in all the lowland areas now. We thought it was hard enough throughout the day, but it just keeps coming and getting stronger and stronger. And it's not showing any signs of stopping. It's just ridiculous. It's been about 24 hours since uh, the first little drop of water came down. Rained all last night. We had a break this morning to take the tent down, and now it's raining hard and flooding in areas. And I hope to God it breaks by tomorrow. It'll be a fun paddle, if not. morning of day four and it's thankfully stopped raining it rained for about 24 hours straight we've actually been able to get things fairly dry they're a little damp some of our clothes still gonna wear some of our dampish clothes today because we have those dry pairs just in case it's gonna be raining again today want to make sure we have a nice dry pair of clothes to change into a camp always want to make sure that you have a dry pair of clothes but that being said a little damp, but there's a nice breeze blowing through here. We're able to get a lot of things kind of dry this morning as we're taking down camp. 
Model about just a little longer just to make sure that things got as dry as possible before we hit the water today just to give that little extra bit of comfort. So plan for today is not to go as far as yesterday. It turns out we actually went close to 39k when it was raining. A couple sites were taken up too so we just kept pushing. Found ourselves this gorgeous beach site but unfortunately in a rainstorm with this nice open sandy expanse we really couldn't enjoy it as much on a hot sunny day. A little bit unfortunate but today we've got a full day of paddling ahead of us, some more portages and hopefully a bit of a side trek out to the waterfall and the Caribou River as well. Should be a great day on the water, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully the rain stays off. There are patches of blue up there at times, so maybe we'll get some rays of sunshine coming down. Looking forward to what the day brings. We just left camp and it's starting to rain again. So we got maybe a four hour window where it didn't rain perfect for drying things out but now it's pouring. Now we got to get geared back up for this nonsense. Oh well, what are we going to do? Yeah. At least we got this spray deck. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, it's a couple extra pounds for portage and then sometimes the sight lines kind of suck on it but man oh man. Even just flat water, windy paddling like this with the rain, this is such a godsend. the river in front of us. The little black bear is pretty neat. It's a little silver line in all this rain. <laughs> Beached the canoe here on Una Lake and we're gonna hike about 1.5 kilometers to Caribou Falls which is apparently pretty impressive at about 24 meters in height. So, break the day up a bit, even though it's kind of a gray, cool, rainy day. Be nice just to get out of the boat and not do a portage. Plus, it's actually nice to see the forest without a canoe on my head. <laughs> so, a little change of pace, something different. view of Caribou Falls. This thing is impressive. 24 meters, has an initial drop, then a huge drop through a canyon. You can't even see the falls because of all the mist. And then it goes through this gorge. Just incredible scenery right here. It was well worth the side trip out here. Fantastic. And the rain's held off too to appreciate this beautiful wonder. Bit of a headwind today. It shouldn't be too much of an issue right now. Uh, we get into smaller lakes 
So we'll see how that changes in funneling the wind. But the environment's definitely a little bit different around here in terms of the tree canopy and coverage. There's been some pine beetle outbreaks around here. So a lot of the lodgepole pines got denuded, killed, and have been uh, cleared by park staff. So a lot more open sites around here. We've also started to see some balsam poplar and birch is starting to pop up. So really different than the older growth firs, hemlocks and cedars we were seeing up on Isaac Lake. Alright guys, this is Spectral Lake. And the rain's been holding off for about two hours right now. It's actually been really nice. But of course, as soon as we launch into this lake, rain showers are moving in. Good news is this is the lake we want to stay at. Bad news is we want to stay kilometers further up it. So hopefully this passes. A little different scenery here too, not as craggly peaks around here. The water's nice and clear, lots of sandy beaches. Just hopefully some sun comes out so we can enjoy it. I'm getting the camp. No kidding. So it's still raining. We're on Spectacle Lakes. Got a really nice site with the beach here. Between the raindrops, we got camp all set up, got a fire going. But of course, the rain is coming down harder again. So we're just gonna get started on some burritos for dinner tonight. We've got a whole bunch of dehydrated salsa, queso, beans, beefy goodness. It's gonna be delicious on this cooler day. Great final send off meal here in the bar run. Nom, 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 nom. So we rehydrated some ground beef and we cut up some cabbage and onion and we sauteed the cabbage and onion, put it into a pan, got it all warm again and added this chipotle sauce and then we rehydrated some refried beans as well as queso and salsa together and some shredded cheese and then we have it on our cheese tortilla and we're gonna have a burrito tonight and the sun just came out so it's good for our last meal oh the mixture is good yeah, it is good eh? mm-hmm mm -hmm. you have enough crunch from the cabbage and onion too mm -hmm. it was good after a long day to play today too mm -hmm. even though today was relatively easy comparative to like Yesterday's nearly 40k. Mm So I've been meaning to bake something on this trip, but we've been rained out. So I brought my regular baking supplies with me. However, I didn't write out any recipes this time, so I'm gonna be completely winging this. All right, so I got a little bit of water in here. That's probably 125 milliliters. Let's step it up with some Bisquick. I've got Bisquick, I've got milk powder, I've got egg replacement powder, I've got honey, we have apples. I'm gonna combine this together best as I can and I'm gonna bake it in the reflector oven over the fire here. 
we'll see how it turns out consistency wise but i'm sure at least flavor wise it's going to be decent our mystery bake loaf thing good shape <laughs> Good morning. It is our final day, day five, making our way up Swan and Bow Run Lakes back to the truck. 14 kilometers, no portages, should hopefully be pretty easy. And the sun is shining right now. So hopefully it stays shining all day. There's patches of blue sky up there, some misty clouds up in the mountains, but nice change in temperature and weather from the last two days here. So. Final day, we're gonna enjoy our paddle back and hopefully we'll see some wildlife in the creek further up. Smooth paddling ahead. Just making our way downstream on the Bowron River into Bowron Lake. Final stretch of our journey. Just a bunch of flat water paddling ahead. Nice little current here though to move us along. And some of those mountains that have been flanking us have now been kind of revealed as the clouds are receding. It's what really drew me to this park in the first place. And it's been absolutely breathtaking scenery, even when cloudy and gray. Just very different than what we're used to paddling in Ontario. And we always try to plan a trip around something like mountains or canyons. So the scenery on this trip did not disappoint. <laughs> 